Vladimir Putin once declared that he could forgive anything except betrayal. And it seems the despot has once again been as good as his word after a plane thought to be carrying Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin crashed and killed everyone on board. Theories abound about what exactly happened to the Embara 600 jet as it took off from Moscow weeks after Wagner's failed coup, but almost nobody believes it was an accident. Here, we examine five ways the jet could have been brought down and ask whether Prigozhin really is dead or whether he has joined an elite club of men who have got one over on Vladimir Putin and lived to tell the tale. The preeminent theory among Western spy agencies is that the plane was blown up using a bomb that was placed on board. US officials say their spy satellites detected an explosion along the plane's route, but no sign of a missile being fired, suggesting a blast from inside the aircraft. And witnesses on the ground report hearing a loud explosion before the jet plummeted to Earth, which could have been the bomb exploding. If true, then there are a number of suspects who may have planted the explosives. But the most likely explanation is that Russia was responsible. Russian media say that police are now hunting for Artem Stepanov, a pilot with links to Prigozhin, who allegedly had access to the plane but vanished shortly before the crash. Another theory that rapidly emerged on both pro-Kremlin and pro-Wagner telegram channels is that a crate of fine wine laced with explosives caused the blast. It is thought those on the plane were in Moscow for a meeting with the Russian MOD, where the wine could have been handed to them as a gift. The explosion also came on the same day that Russia sacked General Sergei Surovaikin, who is thought to have helped with the coup, suggesting a coordinated takedown of the plotters. And this method seems in keeping with assassinations that the FSB and GRU have carried out for Putin in the past, which have involved radioactive tea and poisoned underpants. Another possibility, which has been touted by anonymous sources speaking to Russian media, is that their own air defences were used to shoot the plane down. Certainly, this would have been the easiest method of downing the aircraft. Dozens of Russia's most advanced missile systems are currently deployed around Moscow to thwart Ukrainian drone attacks on the city. And a simple order to the Russian MOD, who are themselves bitter enemies of Prigozhin, would have been all that was necessary to have the jet blown out of the sky. Security experts say footage of the aircraft tumbling to Earth suggests it was hit by something from the outside that disabled the controls but left the plane more or less intact. Meanwhile, the altitude of the plane means only advanced anti-aircraft systems could have hit it, and the location means only Russian anti-aircraft systems would have been within range. Such an approach seems unusually brazen for Putin, who typically prefers clandestine poison attacks to take care of those who cross him. But it would also send a powerful message that he can shoot those who defy him in broad daylight and nobody is going to stop him. If it turns out that Russia was not behind the sabotage, then the next likeliest suspect would be Ukraine. Kiev wanted Prigozhin dead just as much as Moscow did, and they have assassinated people on Russian soil before. Daria Dugina, daughter of propagandist Alexander Dugin, was blown up near Moscow last year in a car bombing thought to have been carried out by Ukrainian military intelligence. And Vladlen Tatarsky, another pro-war propagandist, was killed using a statue of his own head that had been packed with explosives. Killing the man known as Putin's chef with a crate of fine wine fits a pattern of twisted irony that Ukraine's assassins have become known for. But Prigozhin was reported to be paranoid about security and for Ukraine to get an explosive close to him would have been extremely difficult. And attacking a plane in flight would have been a new level of sophistication from Kiev's past killings. 
Another option is that Prigozhin was betrayed by the man who had vowed to keep him safe, Alexander Lukashenko. The Belarus dictator was said to have brokered the deal that kept Prigozhin alive when his march to Moscow failed, but he may simply have been biding his time. Having earned the warlord's trust, Lukashenko could either have killed him on Putin's orders or carried out the killing on his own initiative, hoping to impress his effective boss. And he has form, having once used his air force to ground a Ryanair jet before hauling off a dissident journalist who was promptly carted off to the torture chamber. But perhaps the most intriguing possibility is that Prigozhin is still alive and has elaborately staged his own death in order to escape Putin's clutches. Though he was not known as an intelligent man, Prigozhin cannot have been ignorant of the danger he was in following his coup. He must have known it was only a matter of time before someone tried to kill him and had reportedly taken extreme measures to protect himself. He was said to travel alongside several men who had changed their names to match his so it would not be clear from travel documents alone where exactly he was. And he is thought to have stayed almost permanently airborne to further confuse people as to his whereabouts. At the time his plane crashed, a second jet that he also owned was in the air, zigzagging over Moscow, leading to speculation that he was actually on board that aircraft, which escaped unharmed. Questions have also been raised as to why, given the danger they were in, Prigozhin would have boarded the same plane as Dmitry Utkin, his effective deputy in the Wagner Group, who is also thought to have died. That seems like an exceptional security flaw for a man said to be as paranoid as Prigozhin. Unless, of course, they wanted the Kremlin to think that they were both dead as a means of escape. <laughs> Further suspicion has been raised by the speed with which the Wagner Group confirmed their leader's death. Video reveals the jet exploded into a fireball after hitting the ground, so the remains of anyone on board are likely to have been eviscerated. How would Wagner have established so quickly that Prigozhin was among the dead, unless they knew about the crash ahead of time and had the message prepared? It would not be the first time that Prigozhin has seemingly died. In 2019, he was reported to have been killed in Africa before re-emerging very much alive several months later. If indeed he has staged his death, then Wagner's vast operations in Africa, which financed themselves with plundered gold and diamonds, would provide the perfect hiding spot. Given the fog of disinformation that shrouds everything in Russia, especially those close to the Kremlin, it is possible we will never know what really happened to Prigozhin. It is conceivable that he is still out there somewhere, plotting his next move against Putin as the Russian leader's special military operation stumbles from bad to worse. As Keir Giles, a respected Russia expert at the Chatham House think tank put it, let's not be surprised if he pops up somewhere shortly. But until then, it seems we have little choice but to assume Prigozhin has met his maker, probably at the hands of the Russian president. As far as we know, Putin's chef has eaten his final meal, a dish of revenge, which, as CIA director Bill Burns once said, Putin prefers to serve cold. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this.